Come back. In the midst of celebrating Pan, we are also celebrating the success of uh, the uh, Commonwealth Games, the Youth Commonwealth Games that would have taken place right here in Tobago. And we do have on set the Minister of Sport, Ms. Shamfa Kojo, an MP for Tobago West. Good morning and welcome, ma'am. Good morning, Brother B. Good morning, Jaman. Yes. Very yes, good. I got it right this time. Right. Thank you for having me this morning. Good morning, Tobago. It's a real pleasure to be here. A successful run of this event yes, that uh, took place here in Tobago. Uh, and Trinidad. And Trinidad. Yes. <laughs> uh, just an overview uh, as to, well, how do you feel presently of the successful uh, uh, staging of the Commonwealth Games? I feel humbled. I feel humbled. Uh, it's a lot of work that went into getting us to where we are today from winning the bid in 2018 and getting everybody on board to work together. Uh, when Brian Lewis, who was the then president of the TTOC, came to me with the idea, I thought he was crazy. And um, we bid and we won. And this is the first time it's being held in the Caribbean, first time uh, Trinidad and Tobago is ho hosting a multi-sport event. And some may say it's, um, it's a youth game, so it's nothing major. But that makes it more major because you're dealing with children, so you have to be extra careful in making sure everybody's safe and secure. And that um, has been successful based on the efforts of all the moving parts from the government, um, fire service, police service, Tobago House of Assembly, all partners coming on board and most importantly, the volunteers. So uh, for me, I, I say humbled also because Trinidad and Tobago rose to the occasion. At first it was very, very challenging, even days leading up to the games from readiness of facilities to everything and everybody being in place, that was a challenge. But I think everybody in their respective corners pulled their weight and rose to the occasion and our guests have had a good time. Today we pull the curtains down and I must say I'm really happy and it's an interesting and good time to lead the sporting industry at this time. So we get to see sport at work, the sport as a business, sport as a unifying force. So from a non-athlete myself, <laughs> well, you run say, marathon and so you're not I run, but I don't run competitively <laughs> like that, you know? But, but just I must some, say it's a pleasure. But yeah. just for some context, 72 <laughs> countries, including Trinidad and Tobago. Including um, Trinidad and Tobago. Those numbers speak for itself. Yes. But in terms of, um, you once said that the games would further position Trinidad and Tobago as a hub for sports That's tourism. Right. That's right. Um, just speak a little Bit, a, a bit on that point. Over the years, we have been invested in sporting facilities, in providing support also to our national governing bodies, and encouraging them to host. I came from Ministry of Tourism into Ministry of Sport. And uh, when I became minister, one of the main mandates is to make sure that NGBs are in sport that they host. We want to be the central for hosting. We've invested in these facilities. The weather is perfect. We have the um, administrators, the officials, and so on. And um, Trinidad and Tobago is a, a, a good place to have sporting activity for tourism purposes. So over the years, we've seen national governing bodies um, partner with the Ministry of Sport or Ministry of Sport sponsor national governing bodies. We hosted Pan Am uh, um, games here in, uh, what do you call it, where they row, Dragon Boat competition. Right, yes, I remember that in 2018, 2019. We continue to sponsor cricket, football, you name it. So to be able to host a multi-sport event, it really put the spotlight that we have the facilities, we have the weather, and from hosting conferences and, and shows and carnival, we know how to pull this kind of thing together. So many people thought that it couldn't happen, but we did it, and we did it successfully, and I want to say hats off to everybody who made it happen. All right, so just speak about the uh, well, the potential of lack of use. Is that a, uh, that we have to consider, given the new spanking facility there at Corlan mm -hmm. that uh, accommodates volleyball, uh, beach soccer, uh, plans going forward to accommodate competitive and yeah. regional yeah. games, maybe, uh, yeah. you would have an idea as to the future use mm -hmm of these venues? I think the facility in uh, Blackrock is a plus, a huge plus, as I said, when I wrote to the Commonwealth Games Federation, convincing them that we should have this facility and we should move forward with it. Because at one point in time, they, they were looking at pulling volleyball because they were not sure about the readiness uh, of the facility in time. So they were looking at pulling volleyball off the sport program. And I said, I have every confidence that Trinidad and Tobago would rise to the occasion and make it happen. This is 
is our facility a legacy project, not only for Tobago, but for Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. We're looking at the only one of its kind nationally, and I think regionally. Uh, we're building a world-class world -class facility. It's not completed just yet, but uh, we are already talking with the National Volleyball Federation towards having um, more activities of that nature, and not only volleyball, also um, TTFA, having beach football activities there. Our business as government in Trinidad and Tobago is to ensure all our facilities are utilized to the best of our ability to generate economic activity, to put money and opportunity into the hands of Trinbegonians. You know, and that doesn't just mean the athletes, the people selling the food, the cultural ambassadors who are doing the dancing and so on, and the entertainment, to the lady washing clothes, to the taxi drivers I met on the airport this morning, to those preparing food. You know, it's so much excitement and money is coming into the hands of these folks. As government, we invested $35 million in these games and private sector came on board too. So at the end of the day, that would spread its way, find its way into communities and help us to, to build. So I'm not afraid of lack of use. I think by being trained, the officials now, we don't have to wait on international games to come our way. We can bid, one and two. We can have our own national games. And officials have been trained. Now you can run school programs, community programs, programs and so on and keep these facilities active and that would redound to the benefit of all of us as Tobagonians and Trinbagonians. Fantastic and you spoke mm -hmm. about sport tourism and you're speaking about the facilities and the plans but for the young athletes um, of course um, Trinidad and you can correct me Trinidad and Tobago received 15 medals, 4 gold, 5 medals. silver and 6 bronze yes. which is congratulations to that yes. um, but when we look at the gap between the, the major countries in terms of the Australias and so mm -hmm. on. How can we lessen the gap and even start to compete with them um, and looking at the performances of our youngsters and I, our athletes? I think before we overlook that, let's take a moment to congratulate the athletes. This is the best we've ever done at the Commonwealth Youth Games. Yeah. It's the most medals, 15 medals. And um, at the end of the day, we're competing against the big guns. We are uh, seventh in uh, ranking amongst 72 nations. Hmm. Yes, you're in the first 10, mm -hmm. first seven among 72 uh, nations. So I think that it is something to celebrate. We've also seen new athletes make their name. Yes. And some athletes we're hearing for the first time making their mark on the world stage. Now we look to uh, Wales, we look to South Africa, we look to Australia, who put a good spanking <laughs> on everybody. <laughs> and we must look at their system um, as it relates to their sport in school system. The culture of the people in Australia. It's a part of their daily lives. It's a part of their development. We in Trinidad and Tobago, even when we compare ourselves to Jamaica, because Jamaica, I don't think Jamaica is in the top 10. Jamaica is somewhere all yes, the way I, down I at, Jamaica here. is at number 13. So we're number one in the Caribbean. Uh, then you have Cayman at number 10, Guyana, uh, Cayman at number two, Guyana, at number three, and Jamaica at number four. You know, Trinidad and Tobago, 7th in ranking, Cayman at 10, Guyana at 11, and Jamaica. We even beat Canada. So, um, to me, this is about opportunity. And we utilize this, these games to promote our sport in schools, platform, and sport in communities. Now our officials have been trained and have had the experience. It's about con continuing. You know, it's a, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. It's a relay even and as you pass it all from one to the other and everybody has right. to pull their weight. Um, countries like Australia, South Africa, their sport in schools and sport in communities program as old as 100 years and we are still in our development stages. It takes also volunteerism from community leaders and teachers to make these programs work and that volunteerism has not been very present in our school system. Back in the days, teachers used to stay back and, and, and be a Part teachers were coaches. I see you're watching your phone. Yes, teacher. my father, agri teacher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ms. Ms. Kojo, and clearly, uh, the development programs need to be in place. Mm -hmm. And so I, I trust, and we are accused of not taking sports seriously in this country. How do you want to speak to that and maybe debunk some of uh, the rumors that may not necessarily be true? But let's speak to the future mm -hmm. of development of sport and mm -hmm. the impact 
importance of the development, the mechanism that needs yeah. to go in place, and what is the division will do, or what ministry, what your ministry will do to assist in that regard. I, I think um, we first must see it as an all of government and an all of society type of thing. Mm -hmm. Because as much as the government continues to invest and provide funding and grants for athletes and even rewards and incentives, we are one of the few countries that give rewards and incentives to athletes uh, when they medal and so on. It's a mindset of people, of parents, of teachers. Uh, in, in all days in school, they used to make us think that sports is for dancy head children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're participating in sport, then you can't focus on your schoolwork. When it's exam time, they pull you out of the sporting activity, and most times you don't get to go back. Or even as a young woman gets to childbearing age, you're forced to kind of pull out and focus on finding a husband and, and, and getting pregnant and so on. So even as we look at the medal count, we look at the breakdown between men and women. You have, for, of all 14 or 15 medals, you have 10 mm -hmm. by males, four by females and one from a mixed team, you know, and that's something to look at because we're working towards 50-50, total participation for everyone. So that mindset has to change. When you have a school system where the teacher or the principal is responsible for saying how much of the funding is spent on sport and whether or not a child that missed class due to sport gets the opportunity to catch up on a weekend or late evening. You know, we have to look at the whole system. We have to look at our mindset also because we as parents also do some damage by pulling children out of sport or making them choose. That is why we started this national campaign in July called I Choose Sport, encouraging parents, encouraging PTAs, encouraging principals and students to also choose sport as a part of, of their development. We have GC Foster from Jamaica coming in to do a program that they would have done in Tobago many years ago because we are doing good in Tobago as it relates to sport in schools. Eh? You have a sport in schools unit coming out of that work that GC Foster had done many Many years ago when uh, Joma Pitt had brought them in and I'm happy that other secretaries are continuing the same program. Uh, we have GC Foster coming in uh, next week to work with yeah. the PE teachers and so on towards ramping up sport in schools okay. as we go forward from next to Closing the, obviously uh, today yes. is the, uh, the closing at Pigeon Point. Uh, yes. just, just go walk, to us, walk us through the format uh, that is going to take to the uh, 71 countries plus Trinidad, right. making Trinidad and Tobago 72. Yes. Tell us. We just, um, I just got the update that 650 of the participants just left on the boat hmm. to come over for that um, celebration. And, and with that said, I want to commend the, the, the port, the ferry, um, the, the Port Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. Even Caribbean Airlines stepped up and, and, and played its part in getting the athletes and the officials back and forth. But today we get down to Crown Point and we march into Pigeon Point as Tobago showcases its culture and the people and the warmth and the food and everything. I think that this is where the thing takes peak. This is the, the, the cherry on top. You know, um, for the athletes who got the opportunity to experience both Trinidad and Tobago, you got the major tree. Um, as I told them the whole time, we are accustomed to hosting heritage and so on. And in Tobago, we are extra people. I tell we you, we are, we are, we are extra. people. Yeah. And um, yeah. I look forward to that, the it's celebration, right. the dancing. So I really, really look forward to all that's going to take place. In, at the opening, Trinidad and Carnival Culture took center stage. Mm -hmm. And as we close, we're going to bring down the curtains in a major way by a production put on by Alma Gordon and her team. The Tobago House of Assembly has been on board and doing a wonderful job those public servants in their different quarters have stepped up uh, to the plate and really work with us uh, as central government to put on a good show. I think everybody in their corner pulled their weight. So Excellent. today we bring the curtains down, major celebration to send off for our guests. And I think that this is the best Commonwealth Youth Games they have ever seen. At least that's what we're hearing from the president and the executive of the Commonwealth Games Federation. So I'm happy to host and Excellent. I'm happy that everybody had a All wonderful right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We celebrate that. And <laughs> yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we want to thank you for being here with us this morning. My and congratulations. Pleasure. All right. So. Yeah. All right. So we, we, we do have a little more time, I was told. Yeah. And, so we can, we can and, I, and I'm glad you, you touched on that with the Commonwealth mm -hmm. Federation. And, yes. um, you, and naturally, you would have been privy to having conversations. Yes. They are satisfied from initial yes. feedback. Well, at, at first, they were worried, as I, I, I told you, as it relates to the uh, Black Rock facility not coming on on time and not getting to do the relevant uh, practice 
uh, games and so on. But uh, I kept giving them the assurance that don't worry, we're going to rise to the occasion and make it happen. Of course, there was some disappointment. They wrote to me speaking about their disappointment and concern. I wrote back saying, hey, the sand is here. We're going to get going. And I think the workers, the people who work there day and night, mm -hmm. everybody, people on the port, mm -hmm. Minister Rohan Sinana, and everybody who pulled their weight to make sure George Leacock is a champion. Let me tell you, George Leacock made a lot happen over these last couple of months. He's a go-getter. He's an action figure. And I want to thank him and salute him for his outstanding work. Everybody who pulled their weight. Let me tell you, it's a lot of... Uh, stupid talk and, 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 and grandstanding taking place out in the public, maybe for the politics, but at the back of it all, Tobagonians and Trinidadians, central government and THA, everybody step up to the plate. These workers, these public servants in their different divisions, step up to the plate and did their work. You have a URP building for the first time, yeah. a wheelchair accessible podium. Yeah. And we're thinking, we, we, I think we can say it's the only one in the Caribbean, and as we do our research, we, we may find out it's the only one in the world. And that was developed by right. all URP here in Trinidad Very and good. Tobago. All right, so, um, and, and you know, it begs the question, this question about collaborations, mm -hmm. and I've often I've asked you that right on the set about working together to get yes. the job done. And clearly, mm -hmm. without any effort of trying to work together, it had to work together. It has and to. you spoke about yes. that. All right. So, so going forward, obviously there are areas of interest in, yeah. in the sporting varying disciplines mm -hmm. that needs the beefing up, so to speak. Yeah. So as to bring us to that international level, you spoke about this, the uh, the standard that Australia has demonstrated. Yes. Obviously there's a need for the schooling of sport and development. You spoke about children pulling away their children when it's exam yes. time and we mm -hmm. focus on exam mm -hmm. and not recognizing that there's a, a, a career path here yes. that you can be, uh, you can earn more money than I make as a teacher or as a, right. uh, as a doctor. Right. What, what do we need to do uh, in, from your vision? What do you have in your mind? that we can do to make our athletes uh, bring us to international level? I think it's everybody um, being responsible and being genuinely interested in sport development. Rather than holding a one-day sport and family day, I want to see more academies. We would fund more academies and people doing long-term work through development program works. You have too many one-day family days happening, and then what? And they're expensive one-day family days, huh? Mm. So um, it, it, it calls for focus. And from the time you don't support it, they, they tell you you're wicked and that kind of thing. But there must be strategy as it relates to what we're doing. And in your communities, back then you have community groups. Whatever happened to Stokely Vale and Phoenix and everybody that used to be doing all that community work? We in Tobago don't have to wait on a national pro league mm. to have community football going mm -hmm. you understand and that should be so for every single discipline and as ministry of sport and i'm sure through the in Tobago House of Assembly, the Lallon Gordon Fund and all the other grants that they have in the Tobago House of Assembly will be willing to step to the plate, step up and provide that support. But you in your community have to also remember your responsibility. Remember back then on a Saturday you would send your child to some kind of sporting group or some kind of community group. It was a part of what we did as a people. We need to bring that back to really see the true, true benefits of sport. And we have to work together because sport is so much bigger than all of us. So as much as we had been here over this time and the THA refused to speak to me the whole time during this process, I still have to put my shoulder to the wheel and do the work and ensure that the CGF, the Commonwealth Games Federation, see us as something positive and not okay. pull the games from us like they did with Northern Ireland. Excellent. So here we are at the end and I'm happy to reach the finish line. Very I trust that everybody had a good time. All right, time. we got to leave it there. However, <laughs> I know you have pan in your blood. Your daddy was a Alan a pan man. man. Double Today tenor man. Today is World Steel Pan Day. Just a few words quickly as we go. Oh, wow. Um, I acted as Minister of Tourism on the day we were, um, or, uh, we got World, World Steel Pan Day at the United Nations. It is truly a remarkable place to be in after so many years looking at the struggle of the steel pan and the steel pan movement and the outstanding contribution it has made to Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean and the world. So today I'm pleased, today I'm proud as the daughter of a pan man. I'm very, very <laughs> proud. Can, can you play? Can you play? No. no my siblings can though. My yeah. siblings can, but I, I, yeah. I can't. I hope to learn though. I hope to do yeah. that one of these right. July, August break. I will okay. do that sometime. <laughs> All right, so true. I thank you again, ma'am. We go for the break. When we come back, we'll finish with Mr. Renison Kwashi and, of course, Mr. Brooms. So, uh, I think we can head straight into the pan, brother B. All right, well, let's do that. 
All right.